Hello everyone! In this video we are going to look at everything we need to know in order to make the dough coroutines. We are going to take a look at what they are, at the yield function, at the await keyword and the differences between Godot 3.5 and Godot 4 and also for ways to migrate between these versions. For a better experience I'm going to add chapters to these videos so if you want you can jump at what interests you the most. Now what is a coroutine? Coroutines are basically program components which allow execution to be suspended and resumed. They are essentially subroutines generalized for cooperative multitasking. Let's see what that means. As an example, we could have a subroutine which uh, simulates a car moving from left to right. Now, if we had a character which wanted to simply cross the street, we would have a problem. The problem would be that the car would never stop because it doesn't have that functionality. And this is where coroutines come in. What a coroutine does is to basically put a yield sign in front of the car in order to tell it to stop its execution until the character has finally crossed the street. After the character crossed the street, the car can continue moving forward from that point on. Now, in order to achieve this in Godot 4, we would need to use the await keyword. The await keyword basically stops the execution of the current function until a signal is emitted or until a coroutine finishes. In order to exemplify this, I prepared a confirm button here and a label. Now let's see what we can do with those. Now here I have already initialized the button and the label and what we basically want to do is to check if the button has been pressed already or not. So we are simply going to create a function called check pressed. And what is this function going to do? Well, basically, initially we want to set a value to the label and to set another value once we press the button. So I'm going to say table.text equals to not pressed and label.text equals to pressed. In between these two assignments for label.text, we want to check for the button. And what did we say? We said that the await keyword can wait for a signal. Now, does the button have a signal which we can wait for? Well, if we click on the button and go to node, we see that we have uh, some signals here and we have the button up signal. So we can simply write here await button dot button up. And now if we run the program, we can see that we have the button and the label has the text set to not pressed. So the execution of our check pressed function basically stopped at line 12 here. If we press on the button, the button is going to emit the button up signal and the check pressed function will move forward until it reaches the end here where the label text gets changed to pressed. So if I click on confirm, we see that the label is now pressed. Now, we need to be a bit careful because another aspect of the await keyword is that it also makes the caller function into a coroutine. Now, what does that mean? It means that the function basically becomes asynchronous and if we don't wait for it to finish, other things might happen beforehand. So let's exemplify this by giving the label text another value after we call the function. So let's say label.text equals to something. Okay. Now, what do we expect here to happen? We would expect, since we called the check pressed function first, to set the label to not pressed, to wait for the button to be pressed, to set the label to pressed after the button is pressed, and after we leave this check pressed function, to move forward to label text equals to something, and set the value to something. Now, let's see what actually happens. If we now run the code, we see that our label is being set to something. Now, this is not really what we expected. So why is this happening? Let's go line by line. The first thing we do is to call the check pressed function. Now, this check pressed function sets the label text to be equal to not pressed. The next thing we do is await for the button up signal. Now, an additional thing that the await keyword does is to pass back the control to the caller function. This happens because we do not want to stop everything that's going on in this function because this button has not been pressed. So by passing down the control to the caller function, 
what is the color function. The color function is ready because we used ready in order to call check pressed. So by passing back the control to ready, we move forward to the next instruction in this function and the next instruction is label.text equals something. So what happened? Well, we set initially the label text to not pressed. We give back the control to ready. We set the value to something. And now the ready function is finished. What we can do next is simply press the button. Once we press the button, the control will be given back to the check pressed function and the label text will be set to pressed. So let's try that out. We click the confirm button and the label text indeed is becoming pressed. Now, if we want to avoid this, if we want instructions to happen in order, what did we say that await makes the color function into a coroutine? So if this check pressed is a coroutine, it means that it is asynchronous and we can wait for it to finish if we want. So if we decide that this is the behavior that we want first to have not pressed and then pressed and then something, we can await for this coroutine to finish. So what will happen now? The label text will be set to not pressed. We'll wait for the button up signal and the control will be passed to ready, but ready has a wait here, so nothing will happen. And when the button up signal will be pressed, the label text will be set to pressed and afterwards the label set will be set to something. Now let's try it out. So we see here that we have the label set to not pressed. And if we press the button, the label is going to be something. Why something? Because first it was pressed and really fast afterwards it was set to something. Now, if this checked pressed function actually returned some value, so let's say if we return one from it for some reason, you'd be able to see that Goto helps us by throwing us an error if we try to assign this value. So let's just say that we had here some variable number equals to check pressed. See, here we have function check pressed is a coroutine, so it must be called with a weight. And that is a fair warning because if we were waiting for the button up signal, then this check press basically returns nothing. So the number would take no value and we would have an expected result. Now, indeed, if we listen to this advice and we use await, then we are basically awaiting for the coroutine to finish and the return value will be set to one. And now this number is equal to one, so we can actually print it. So let's see, print number. And if we run it again, see nothing happens, but we are waiting for check press. And after we press, we see here in console that we have the number one. Now I think you can see how this await keyword can be pretty useful because we can wait for a lot of things to happen. We can wait for animations to finish. We can wait for some time to pass. So for example, we could say label.text equals to initial. And now we could create a timer and wait for that timer to run out. So let's say get three dot create timer. And let's give this timer one second. And we want to await for a signal from this timer. Now a timer has the timeout signal. So I'm going to say dot timeout and put a wait in front. And if we run it now, we see that we have initial and in one second it transformed to something. Now, even if you're only planning to use Godot 4, I think it's still important to talk about yield because you might find many tutorials on the internet with yield and or you might want to uh, migrate some code from Godot 3.5 to Godot 4 or you might just be here for Godot 3.5. So let's see how coroutines work there. Now, similarly to await, yield also stops the execution of the current function. But instead of directly returning a value, yield returns a GDescript function state, which keeps track of the state of the yielded function. So, for example, we can resume a function, we can track if it is still valid, so if it has not been resumed, and we can do a bunch of other things. Now, we have the same context as before. We have a button and a label, and we want to do exactly the same thing. So let's make a func, which is uh, check press, okay, and we want to set the label text 
equal to waiting and we want to set the label dot text equal to rest okay now between those we would like to wait for the actual signal from the button before we did it with await now we are going to do it with the yield function so we are going to say yield and we can see in the docs that yield takes two parameters it takes object and it takes the signal that we want from that object so now if i go back which object do we want to wait for we want to wait for button and what signal is well it's button up okay now that we have our button up check we can call the function and if we run our program we see that it is waiting and after we click on button well now it is pressed now exactly the same as await if for example we go here and write label dot text equals to wrong if we run it we see that we first see wrong here why is that well because we first set label text equal to waiting yield gives again the control to the ready function which calls check pressed ready moves to label dot text equals wrong so instead of waiting we see wrong here and obviously after we press button up we see pressed same as with await and if we want to wait for this check press to finish we are going to do it in the same way with yield and we are waiting for check press and what signal well whenever a coroutine finishes the signal that it sends is completed so if we run it now we see that it is waiting we press the button and it has been set to pressed but really fast it was set wrong and now this is the final text if we wanted to wait for a timer for example again we can say label.text equals waiting and label.text equals finished and here in between we can create a timer with get three dot create timer one second and we want to wait for the timeout signal and how we do that is with yield and we add the signal here so timeout let's see that after one second from waiting it transforms to finished so pretty much the same thing now another thing we can do with yield is to immediately stop the functionality of a coroutine let's see how that happens we could create a function here to yield and this function is going to print a few things so let's print uh, first let's print second okay and we want between the first and the second to stop printing anything so we can simply say yield now the simple yield function with no parameters is going to return a gdscript function state gdscript function state is basically telling us the current state of our coroutine and it has two methods one is valid and one resume so basically if the coroutine did not finish it will be valid and we can resume it so let's give it a try let's simply assign this to a variable so let's say var coroutine equals to to yield now that we have this coroutine we can simply do something like print third and we can say coroutine dot resume now if everything works as expected we are going to see first then take a break see third then resume and then see second so if we run it we see first third and second just as we expected to another nice thing that this resume function is capable of is passing a parameter so we can pass the parameter fourth for example and this yield will return whatever we passed in our resume so it could be a parameter could be an object could be anything but now if it's a string we could simply say print and we actually print this string or we could save it in a variable to make it more, more clear or we could simply save it into a variable to make it more clear so let's say var result equals to yield and we can now print result so what's going to happen well first we are printing first afterwards we are yielding so then 
if we yield, we go back to our ready function. We print third. We resume the coroutine with fourth. So we get the result from the yielded function into res. We are going to print what's in res and what is it in res. It's the fourth string. And afterwards, we are going to print second. So first, third, fourth, and second. If we run this, we see first, third, fourth, and second here. Yield has quite a lot of freedom when working with signals. For example, we could also have a signal that we defined. For example, we could have something like signal test, which has the parameter one and parameter two. Now we can create a function and let's call it test emitter. And in this function, we want to pretend that we are processing something, it takes some time, and we want to get those processed values. So let's just say print doing stuff. And now we want to wait some time. We have seen how we wait some time. We are going to use yield. And we want to get three to create a timer of two seconds, let's say. And we want to wait until it times out. So we are doing stuff, we are waiting for two seconds. And afterwards we obtained our values and we want to emit a test signal with our values. So I'm going to say emit signal. And here I'm going to write test and the values are going to be P1 and P2. Why not? Okay, uh, let's see, I think I have a typo here. Oh yes, one. Okay, this is fine. Now in our ready function, we can say test emitter called it and we are waiting for these values so that we can read them so we can say var values equal to to what to yield and now which node emits this signal well since this signal has been defined in our node it's going to be self and the signal that we are going to be waiting for is test so the values are going to be collected after the test signal is being emitted and now we can print these values they are going to be stored in an array if there are more values. So let's simply say print values of zero and do the same for values one. Now, if we run this, it's going to do stuff for two seconds and afterwards it's going to print P1 and P2. So let's try. It's doing stuff and it prints P1 and P2 just as we expected. Now, for migrating between Godot 3.5 and Godot 4.2, I'm going to put right now on the screen some easy changes that you could do. Sadly, for yielding directly to interrupt a method, there is no easy alternative. There has been an ongoing discussion, which I'm going to link in the description of this video. But basically, the developer said that the removal was done deliberately because dealing with GDScript function state was more confusing than helpful in the vast majority of cases. Additionally, there haven't been found concrete examples in which this is needed and there are no alternatives for it. Now, this issue is currently still open, so there might still be hope that we'll get this feature in the future. But until then, there have been people who created workarounds, for example, this cool repository Godot for coroutines, which offers the possibility to resume, to join all or to join either coroutines. And additionally, someone also made this coroutine wrapper, which allows the usage of a resumed or a stopped signal. But don't worry, I'm going to add everything to the description. And in case this issue eventually gets closed, I'm going to update it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that there are also bad practices while using coroutines. So, for example, if we have a process function, we should not use coroutines here. So, let me give you an example. If I create this yield get three create timer timeout coroutine, this is going to create a timer at every single frame. So, we are simply going to have a bunch of timers and nothing is going to work as we expected. One other case in which we shouldn't use coroutines is when changing the scene or when freeing some resources. So let's say that we have a function which changes the scene. So we have func change. And here we, let's say, get three dot change scene and we change to some random scene. But before that, we are 
calling some coroutine. So let's say I have here a func my coroutine. I'm going to say it's my co. And this yields, for example, for two seconds and then sets the label of text to equal something. Now, what happens if we call my co here? Well, we call my co. This waits for two seconds, but in the meantime, this scene gets changed. And if we don't have the current scene, that we have no access to this label. So I guess you see where things could go wrong here. So basically, when using coroutines, make sure that all the resources that you're working with are available. Now, if you have any questions or if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to update the description or to cover it in a new video. And thanks for watching.